Okay, so we've got a question here. We want to find the residues of the hyperbolic cotangent function with input pi z divided by z cubed. So our first goal when trying to find the residues is to find the singularities. So let's just list our singularities. Now straight away with the denominator z cubed, we'll know that there's three singularities or a singularity at z equals zero. So we'll have a pole at z equals zero. Now, as it said cubed, there will be three poles. So there's three poles at z equals zero. So that takes care of our denominator. But now let's have a look at our numerator. So the hyperbolic cotangent function of pi z, this is equivalent to cosh pi z divided by sinh pi z. Now every time this denominator is zero, that will also have a singularity. So the sinh function pi z, there is also one here when z equals zero as well. So there will be another pole. So one more pole at z equals zero. Because when that is sinh pi times zero, that will also be zero. Okay, so therefore we've got four poles. So let's write here, there is four poles at z equals zero. Okay, next we'll set our function to this term here. So we'll set f of z equals hyperbolic cotangent function pi z over z cubed. Okay, and our goal is to find the residue of our function at zero. That's what we're going to do because that's where there's four poles. Okay, now how are we going to go about doing that? Well, to take the derivative of this, um, it's going to be a bit awkward with the hyperbolic cotangent function there. What about if we do the Laurent series? That looks like the most straightforward way. So we're looking for the Laurent series. Okay, well, the hyperbolic cotangent function, we know one for that. So that is just one over z plus z over three minus z cubed over 45 plus two z to the five over nine four five. And then there is more terms going on forever and ever. So I'll just stop at the seventh term. So we'll use O z to the seven to end it there. Okay, now we want hyperbolic cotangent function pi z. So let's just transfer that with pi z in there. So the hyperbolic cotangent function pi z. So whatever we see as z, we'll multiply it by pi and raise it to the same power as the indice of the z. So now we've got one over pi z plus pi z over three minus, well this one's cubed, so we want pi cubed and divide that by 45 and then just stick into the fifth term. This will be pi to the five because we have z to the five and divide by nine four five. We'll just stop it there. Okay, now our function is divided by z cubed. So to do that, we can just divide all of these terms by z cubed and get our equivalent. So the hyperbolic cotangent function pi, co pi z over z cubed. Okay, divide all of these by z cubed. So that gives us one over, so that'd be z to the four, pi z to the four. This one, pi z divided by z cubed will be pi in the numerator, but then z squared and three as a coefficient. So that would take care of that one. Divide this one by z cubed. The z's will just disappear. We'll be left with a constant. So pi cubed over 45. And then this one divided by z cubed, this will just become z squared. And its coefficient will stay as it is. Okay, and again, all these terms will just keep going on. 
Now, when we're dealing with a Laurent series, what we're interested in is the z to the minus one term or the one over z term, whichever way you want to look at it. And the main part is the coefficient, which we'll call alpha, that goes with that term. This term alpha will give us our residue. Now, looking at our Laurent series, there is no one over z term. So therefore, our alpha equals zero. So therefore, by this, our residue of our function at zero is just zero. So that's our residue of hyperbolic cotangent function pi z divided by z cubed is zero. OK, so if you want any more residue uh, questions, have a look in the link below. There's loads of them on these on this channel. So keep an eye out for those. Okay.